Hey guys, it's Stephen here. The day after uh, yesterday, well, obviously it's always the day after yesterday, but that was a very terrible performance yesterday. Um, and I think I'm just kind of about over it today. Uh, I, I lost my temper a bit in the video. Um, it happens sometimes immediately after it, uh, especially during around Christmas when you're in such a good mood and then City drag you straight into that negative mood. Uh, you can get a bit emotional, that kind of stuff. And I do feel like I overreacted a tiny bit, but that happens in football every now and then. That's what football does to us. Um, we care about it. Um, and it can be frustrating especially in the manner that City lost yesterday. Uh, what made it worse, as I said at the start of the video, is very much that it was self-inflicted. And City um, can be incredibly stupid at times, which is crazy for such an intelligent side. It's those extremes that make it so frustrating. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today before... I go into the Sheffield United game as well because obviously that's tomorrow. It's like there's no time for a five things learned and a preview. And so I'm just going to do one big kind of amalgamation video where I talk about both, uh, basically both yesterday and tomorrow ahead. And I want to reflect a little bit more now we've had a bit of time to sink in about the game yesterday and talk about that with a little bit more composure, really, because context is important. I want to basically um, remember that the world hasn't fallen apart. Like, um, I'm. I did this yesterday myself, so I kind of want to make sure we calm down a bit, basically. And context is important, mainly that Wolves are a good side. Now, I think some, sometimes when you forget, like um, when there's an early red card, you forget that um, it happened to an extent. You forget that it really does influ influence the game. And because we watch the team, you know, tailor on, like, basically kind of get on for 80 more minutes, you forget that actually they're down to 10 men and they're knackered. They're down to 10 men, so therefore we're likely to make mistakes because they're rushed and they're tired. And um, it's difficult. Playing against Wolves away from home for that long can be very, very difficult. So it's not nobody, you know. Um, it's just frustrating given the fact that we went to 10 men and then went 2-0 up and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, we have to give Wolves a bit of a credit. I don't think we really gave them anywhere near a credit. They were good. They were up for it. They were fired up for it. And a team that good, and they are a very good team, are going to cause anyone trouble, especially when you got down to 10 men. So I want to basically remember that. And also probably just defend Mendy a little bit because... I was really frustrated him yesterday, and I thought he was a brain fart, and he definitely was. Um, and I think we are allowed to say it was stupid. We 100% are allowed to stupid, say it was stupid, because he should have just kicked it out. Having said that, it could, it probably was a foul on him. In the cold light of day, looking back at it a billion times, it probably was a foul. I mean, he did literally just barge into his back. It wasn't a shoulder barge. It was just a full-on push in his back, and Adama Traore is a big guy. Obviously, obviously, he should have cleared the ball beforehand. Um, but it was probably a foul. Now, you also got to bear in mind... And I'm not trying to excuse Mendy here. Like he actually was pretty decent before that. He was totally fine. He was quite comfortable defensively. He hadn't really made any mistakes before that. And I do appreciate um, that he's come out on social media afterwards and been really, really honest and a really good tweet where he's held his hands up and say it's easy to talk shit when it's going well, but it's hard sometimes when you make a mistake to say it. But he, I want to apologise basically. And I like that. And I also like the fact that he obviously has got a bit of bravery about him. Remember that one thing when he went in with his head as well when he went for the ball. And he did win the header. Um, he didn't pull out of a challenge. And I do really admire that. When some of our players these days, um, they don't really have, you know, uh, the guts these days. You've got a lot of players now who aren't going for the ball. So it was good to see someone actually commit to it. And I guess, you know, um, when you're tired and when you've not really had, like, a lot of football um, and when you're defending with your backs to the wall and you're playing with 10 men, you, you can be prone to making a mistake. I know when I'm tired, I'm a little bit more rash in general. I'll say something that I probably regret a little bit more likely because I'm not thinking straight and I'm a little bit shorter. Or people famously, you know, make mistakes when they're driving, when they're tired and all that kind of stuff. And everyone knows if you play football or play any sport that when you're tired, you're more likely to do something stupid. You make a bad decision because in the moment... Yeah, trying to catch oxygen, you're not thinking quite as clearly. So he could have made like, a mistake because he was tired, because his concentration had gone. So I think we're allowed to call it because it was dumb. It was very dumb. But what I, I what I am kind of tired of, and I saw a lot of this online afterwards, is like, is people taking it past the moment? Like, you're allowed to say, that was stupid. Uh, he's a fool. He made a mistake there. But it's when people go, he's shite. He always will be. He's crap. Get him out of a club. He's a and they get really aggressive and start abusing people on social media. There's absolutely no need for that. Genuinely no need for it. I think we need, we need to kind of just leave it at the door there. Like, you're allowed to criticise them, but then it doesn't mean every player is shite. We should get rid of them all, sell them all, get rid of them, the bad, start abusing them on social media. Sometimes you have to go, that was terrible. That was genuinely terrible. But it doesn't therefore mean there has to be a solution. Like, not every action reaction has to be an 11 out of 10 overreaction. Some things can just be like, that was crap. But there doesn't have to then be a solution. You know, we can just be like, that was crap and that was it. Um, and it could have been just a mistake. And it could have been a bump on the road in his... Uh 
and his recovery from injury. And I, I, he has been playing all right. He has been getting better. So I don't, it's a bit of a shame if he doesn't do it. And I did really get annoyed myself yesterday. So I understand why people have done that. And I, I was involved in that too. And, um, and I, I kind of wish I wasn't quite as emotional as yesterday, but I do think we should kind of calm down a little bit in general. And, you know, <sighs> give him a, maybe a slight bit of benefit of a doubt. I do think his reaction has been really good online. And um, I think Guardiola won't drop him because I think that'd be a very bad decision to make. I think we have to support him through this. Um, he owned up, you know, that's all we can do. And we all make rat decisions when we're tired. And uh, he had a, more of a reason than most, I guess, to be a little bit out of practice. And I also don't really buy into the idea, like we have to start asking questions about Guardiola. I think as Soriano has come out and said as well, sometimes, you know, like... Um, it just happens. Sometimes, you know, like you can have a bad season, especially when you've had 198 points. I think there's been some mistakes made, of course, that has, but this is normal. You know, uh, Alex Ferguson, for example, one of the greatest managers to ever grace the game. Some people would say he's the greatest, and that's hard to dispute. Um, Either way, he's great regardless of where he's standing on him. He had bad seasons. He had years where he could totally utterly struggled, but then he had time to rebuild and refocus. And that's what uh, might be happening for the Manchester City this season. It doesn't mean we're a failure. It doesn't mean we're a terrible team. It, all it means is that we've had one of those seasons. And one thing is I don't really think the players have down tools or anything like that. I don't think they are. I think it's just uh, they're struggling a little bit this season. We are still in a creative attacking side. We've still scored more goals than anyone else in the Premier League. We still are fine going forward. It's just going defensively, going backwards the other way. We are a little bit weak and we are prone to a lack of maybe leadership at times and we are prone to a lack of uh, decisiveness which comes from I don't know bad decision making which could be from tiredness it could be from complacency I don't think it is overly not consciously anyway and it also could be from a lack of focus which comes from a lack of leadership um, I do think there's also something in that you know Pep's future um, we need to really tie that up because there's a lot of talk like constantly in the press conferences about Guardiola and his future and all that kind of stuff and how can we have a team that are all pulling in the same direction like um, how can they all be happy and focus if they don't know the manager's going to be there in six months now I think we all probably know he might stay beyond that but it's still kind of a bit of uncertainty and I think that uncertainty coming from the top can create uncertainty in the players so there's loads of little tiny little things that where we're thinking um, we, we kind of need to know to start planning for next season maybe some of the players need to know what's going on and uh, there's a little bit of uncertainty across the board and I'm kind of a bit bored of hearing the press conferences now so maybe we need some leadership at the top some defiance I'm going to be here next year we're going to be really good and get on with it you know none of this kind of like oh I'll see if the club wants me stuff and it's a bit like we need that leadership now it feels a little bit frustrated basically um but that's Manchester City. On the positives, I thought uh, Rodri and Bernardo were really good. Uh, I thought they were our best players yesterday, looking back at it. I thought they worked really hard. Rodri in particular, I thought was excellent. I thought he was solid. He was strong, winning some good headers. Um, and I thought he was really at home, putting up a barrier, which says a lot about Rodri in general as a person, as a player. Um, I think mean, it was just one of those days. Uh I did I think Garcia did all right when he came on. I don't think he was great when he came on, but it was nice to see him there battling away and getting a chance, even though I thought that was probably the wrong decision overall. We did it apparently to stop you know, space down the channels, but what we did is inadvertently invite pressure, I guess. And then taking De Bruyne off. I know he was in, not injured, sorry. I know they didn't want him to get injured. No, they wanted him resting for tomorrow. But we did concede all threat, basically, and... Um, Gundogan is not the kind of guy who's good in a battle, Gundogan. I mean, I think the idea was that you keep the ball and all that kind of stuff, but he was he was about as effective as Chocolate Fire Guard, if we've been totally honest. Genuinely, not really there at all. It was a strange day, um, and I think we're going to see plenty more of that this season. I'm going to see plenty more of the Leicester game as well. I think it's just this season. I mean, we need players back. Uh, we need to focus, and I think there will be an upheaval in the summer because I think it's just necessary. And I'm not just going to say just spend money for the sake of it, but I think this is going to happen because you've got players who are about to go on and get old. You know, it's not because they're not good enough. It's some of these players are about to just be past their sell by date at uh, Manchester City so that happens when you've had um, the success that we've had you have to keep moving going on and I've calmed down a lot basically um, the context Wolves are a good team uh, Mendy made a mistake it could happen to the best of us it doesn't mean he's a, uh, a twat or that kind of stuff people said on the Twitter no need for that abuse um, and we can move on and as I said about Bravo yesterday people were saying on Twitter why you called out Bravo Bravo was just a momentary frustration because I think he's not a very good keeper <laughs> I think uh, people go, well, there's nothing you could have done with those. He's, you can't do it for him because he's not good enough, um, in my humble opinion. I think you can't really get near him because he's small and he hasn't got his reflexes anymore. He's never a big keeper in the first place, but when you're only tiny and then you get old and you have injuries and all you have Achilles and all that kind of stuff, you lose a bit of spring, you can't dive very far. And I think in general, he shouldn't be anywhere near a club of Manchester City statue. I don't blame him for being our number two. Well, it's not his
his fault that he gets chosen. But I think he's nowhere near good enough. I think he's a really poor keeper, has very little chance of stopping shots. And he can't control crosses. He can't really uh, marshal the area. And he's not that good with his feet these days either. Uh, Bravo, I think he's a great example of someone who should just not be at the club anymore. Um, prime candidate, easily, in my humble opinion, the worst player in the squad. Not his fault, once again. I don't dislike the guy. But that was just justifying my opinion for what I said on Twitter. I'm not scapegoating him. I'm just saying I don't think he's very good. I don't dislike the guy. I don't hate him. I just think he's a bit crap. And I think he's uh hasn't got any reach. I don't think he has any presence. And I don't think he can really save any shots that are more than a meter either side because he's just too small and he's too old, unfortunately. But yeah, um yesterday was a bit of a mess. Um but we move on. We move on. Hopefully we can win some trophies this season. I think we will do. And it brings us nicely on to tomorrow's game uh <laughs> against um a very good team. You know, like we look at the Premier League table now and um as it stands, uh, we're currently third, obviously. We're, we've got like eight points ahead of currently in uh, fifth, so we are kind of relatively safe. But only nine points behind us is Sheffield United down in seven. They're currently ahead of United, Arsenal, you know, teams like that. Sheffield United under Chris Wilder are absolutely brilliant. They're a fantastic team. Um, there's a lot to like about them. I didn't really know enough about Chris Wilder in general. Um, I felt like a... Like a I felt like a bit of an idiot, really, not knowing how good he genuinely was. Don't forget, he did win the LMA manager last season over Guardiola as well, which is crazy given what Guardiola achieved domestically. Um, but Wilder um, has been absolutely fantastic throughout his career. He's a, a natural-born winner, genuinely. He gets teams to be successful. He wins trophies. He gets his players to like him. And he has a very simple but effective way of football. And he is an innovator as well. As you've all seen those overlapping centre-backs which have been pulled apart by loads of pundits. And you've got, like, you know, uh, Chris Basham ranking really high in dribbles. And We've got um, uh, O'Connell. Yeah, uh, O'Connell basically having one of the most amount of crosses for a defender in the Premier League as well. Something like that. I saw a stat recently. Um, and you've got this really interesting style. But more than that, he just gets his players on his side. And they've not lost a single away game since January. That's the undefeated in their away games in the Premier League this season, which is absolutely fantastic. And they're not a team full of stars. And I guess you can't have the success that they have Um we're, we're being a bunch of individuals. Sheffield United are a team built on uh, team spirit, camaraderie, and obviously talent as well. The likes of Musa, obviously, he's a very tricky player. Uh, and they're going to have... Um, they have a real go match to City and they're away you know City are a wounded animal we've got no Edison in goal um, it's obviously only a few hours since we played the last game it's literally yesterday so City will be tired and uh, I can see uh, uh, Sheffield United looking at City thinking do you know what uh, we can get at these and probably rightfully so in terms of the team you're like it, uh, I don't even know who's available I mean I think it'll be very similar maybe we'll see we're gonna, just going to be Bravo and goal which <laughs> I honestly would rather Scott Carson. Genuinely, I think he's probably a better keeper. Uh, I genuinely believe that. Um, but oh well, it is what it is. Fernandinho is going to start again, I reckon, which is going to be tiring. Uh, we'll probably see after Mendy. <clears throat> maybe Cancelo, maybe he'll play. I think Mendy will start again as well. But I don't know if he can start two games back to back that close. And maybe we'll see Angelino or Zinchenko coming or something like that. Um, we haven't got you know, loads of options on the bench at the moment, given it. Maybe you can see Gundogan play. Uh, maybe he'll start De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva once again in the field. We could see Phil Foden get a run out. Um, I think Aguero will start again. Not sure Gabriel Jesus is available. I think he said a bug or something like that. It's going to be Sterling again. It's going to be Mares again, probably, because we haven't really got many options. If we could change up a little bit, we could bring in like... Um, Maybe Foden can come in or something like that. Cancelo could play a little bit further forward, potentially, or something like that. But we have got a few injuries, you know, as we do know. And we're we're, we're going to miss David Silva. Um, we're going to miss Stones, maybe, because it could do him with games this close back-to-back. -back. But we're going to have to go against Sheffield United and just see what we can do, because they're not going to let up. They're going to be... Um, they're going to be really, really tasty and sensing blood against Manchester City. Um, and we this is a game we're going to have to really, really battle. And I'm already dreading it a little bit, <laughs> but... I think it should be a good game of football. I guess it was yesterday for the neutrals, but we need to obviously not handicap ourselves by going down to 10 men early on. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, guys, let me know what you make of the game tomorrow. Uh, I'm still very much in yesterday mode, not thinking about tomorrow mode. So it's been very hard to kind of switch my focus to the Sheffield United game, but that'll come naturally when we see more of the news about the team, break online, all that kind of stuff. And now, though, um, I calm down. I calm down. That's Manchester City supporting it. I think it really got to me yesterday for some reason. I'm normally pretty calm after games, but it got to me. I think it was just frustrating because it was so last minute and so predictable and it was so stupid. It was just such a dumb game of football. Like overall, there was no composure and we, we caused our own problems and 
I didn't want that, I think. I didn't want it. Rumor evening. Thank you, Manchester City, though Nicola Bassa was great and we watched the film and relaxed after because she felt sorry for me for stressing out. And I was there on Twitter like doing that thing, arguing with everyone, and people going, Why are you slagging off uh, Bravo? I'm like, I'm not slagging him off, I was just frustrated and and I forget sometimes that like, if I tweet things and I know I'm lucky to have a lot of followers and if I tweet things and people are going, Oh, people see it, so more people could then say, you know, you've got an agenda and like, I've not got an agenda. I just just a football fan. I'm just a football fan, you know, and I was just moaning like we all do, but I'm aware I've probably got a bit of a platform, so I probably have to choose my words a bit more carefully sometimes. But I'm not always used to that because I'm just a fan, like you and you and me looking at this. And yeah, I'm waffling now. Football, it does silly things to us, guys. And um, once again, if you watched all this video and got to this point, thank you. Um, you're all lovely, and honestly, your support means a lot on this channel. And I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas as well. And if you don't, if you know, if Christmas isn't one of your holidays, I hope you had a nice holiday season at very least. Um, come on, Man City. Do a goal, do a football, score some goals, <laughs> win a game, please. Bye-bye.